it is april it is spring the sun is shining today it is uh, april 13th it's my brother's 50th birthday so congratulations carsten he's not watching this so <laughs> it really doesn't matter today some exciting things to share um, i'm finally ready to reveal the advent so i'll do that a little bit later i'm very excited about this and also i can finally share with you the bird of april because that has been shipped uh, the bird has flown, left the nest, and I can share my Easter egg, some new colors I did on this silky lace base. I have some new blues to share. Uh, if you have watched my um, episode number 63, I can link that up here. I am talking a little bit about how I'm in, I have, like Picasso, moved into a blue, <laughs> the blue area of my uh, yarn dyeing business. It's because I... Um, kind of felt challenged in a good way that this uh, Cecil from uh, Sandra and Cecil, it's a Danish podcaster group. Uh, she was kind of looking for a blue yarn, and uh, I thought that was just a great uh, challenge for me to dye some more blue. I'm not really good at dyeing the blue. I like blue, but I don't dye a lot of blue yarn. So good challenge. So I have a little uh, news on the blue front. Also, I dyed the silky lace that I'll share with you a little bit later. I have a few finished objects, so I am feeling like we have some good content for this episode. So that feels good. I will take this off. I, I always forget to tell what I'm wearing. This Today I'm wearing my um, um, yellow lichen on rocks shawl. And uh, unfortunately, this is not made in my own yarn because at the time when I designed this, I didn't dye my own yarn. Ah uh, yes, so this is uh, La Bienne May. Uh, uh, it's her Yellow Brick Road, her Grillo, and I don't know. I don't remember the last one. And the blue mohair is um, a silk mohair from. Uh, well, actually, I don't remember all the names, so I will link. Uh, this uh, down below so you can go check out all the names and the yarns and everything I used for this. Goody. I'll take this off because it's actually a little bit warm in here. Uh, so I have two finished objects. Ta-da! And the first one is my Melted Mirage. I took the Melted Mirage with me to Cologne. Um, me and Lars and some friends of ours, we went to Cologne uh last weekend because there was this huge um international trade fair so i was there to look at uh, yarn for my yarn dyeing business <laughs> and also just to get inspired and see what's going on in, in the yarn and crafty world that was so much fun if you have not watched i did a vlog from when we went to cologne and if you have not yet watched it, I will put a link up here on, and also just down below so you can watch it once this episode is done. But anyway, I have been working on this beauty uh, since uh, February, so it's actually not that long. I started when we were in Austria. We went uh, to Austria to go skiing. As some of you know, uh, that vacation kind of ended badly because my husband got sick, but he's fine now. Anyway, <laughs> I started this. I did made like so many mistakes because I was uh, so worried and concerned about my poor husband that I just couldn't even read the pattern. So I think I restarted this two times or three times. Anyway, it is now complete. And I did make all these tassels. And I had some of my girlfriends over last time that said, why did you make the tassels? I said, well, I like the tassels. And they're like, oh, you're so 80s. <laughs> I do, I like tassels. I like that bohemian look. Maybe I should wear that. If you are interested in all the yarns that I use for this show, I will put a link down below to the episode where I talk about all the different yarns. And also you can find some of those on uh, Instagram. I think I have a post where I kind of tagged all the different yarns so i don't can i don't want to bore you with that in this episode uh this was actually pretty fun to knit this uh two color brioche i think it's so much fun and it goes fast i did this on a five millimeter needle i think 
or maybe a 4.5 um, but yeah so that's a quick nib I and mean, it's just a fun way to play with all your leftover yarns I picked five different colors uh, to kind of fade and then I had a the same silk mohair as the contrast all the way through but this is just the perfect way to go through your stash and just kind of make your own little fade and and uh, yeah do it personalize your show a little bit so that's what I did and I really I like the I like the color combo I think this is just right up my alley when it comes to colors so yeah I really enjoy my melted mirage I'm, I'm working on how to style this because with all these tassels it's just uh have to be creative I've seen people kind of put in the snips underneath that kind of looks cute too I feel like this is a shawl that I could kind of do uh, multiple times. You know, I remember back in the days I did, there was this shawl, uh, at least here in Denmark, that was like so popular. And uh, it was called Chamomile Shawl. And I think I did five. Sometimes you just kind of find that shawl that you want to do over and over again. And I think I could actually, maybe not over and over again, but this two color brioche, I'm definitely looking into doing more of that. Maybe even in a pattern. And also my own uh, yellow lichen on rocks. I think I made three. I made three of those uh, because it's also just f fun. It's easy, and also you can use up, make your own fade, and kind of use up your old scraps. And I like that. Talking about scraps, maybe you have seen on Instagram. Let me get back to the whole Instagram thing in this later on. Anyway, this is my corner to corner blanket that I started ten months. No two years and 10 months ago and I started in this little corner and uh, this first little uh, snip of color is the merino swirl from um, Fruvelbo who is a Swedish hand dyer and then I think yeah I also have a little bit here that's some sock yarn and after that i decided to only use my single pri single ply my single ply merino so only hand dyed single ply merino uh that was a decision i made because i had so many scraps so it's just to kind of make a rule and have some types of scraps go into a certain basket and then i could i have another project for the sock ones um that's in my living room I, i'm not going to share that today but i will be sharing that eventually I haven't been working on that for a little while because I worked on this. I brought this with me uh, to Austria and thank God I did that because my mind was so stressed out <laughs> that um, the only thing that was really working for me was just crocheting on this back and forth, mindless. But as you can see, this baby just grew and grew and grew. And this last part, like here, this last part I started in Austria. I remember starting on this uh, like sage minty green. Uh, so the rest <laughs> I completed uh, from that a light minty stripe and until uh, the, the end of this blanket. I finished that since February, so two months. Um, the other day, uh, Easter break, I was home alone most of the time. Lars was uh, back at work and the girls, Nomi was traveling uh, in Turkey with a friend and Esther was home from the boarding school, but she was just having so much fun hanging out with all her friends from home. So I actually just worked through the entire Easter. I had a huge wholesale order and I just thought, well, I'm home alone. I might as well just get that order all complete and done. So I did that, that felt good. And then on Sunday, uh, I had no plans and the the dying business was over so I spent the entire Sunday uh, not working uh, the only thing I did was post an Instagram <laughs> um, and then I just crocheted on this and watched Grey is Anatomy all Sunday I don't even remember if I fed the kids <laughs> they survived so anyway this is my corner to corner uh, blanket I have no idea the measurements of this baby I didn't weigh it and I did not do any measurements. I think I will eventually wash it 
and not block it but just kind of lay it out flat so that it'll grow a little just a tiny bit but i'm not actually sure if i'll do that i'm a little scared if the colors will just kind of bleed a little uh they shouldn't but you never know so this is done it's in my living room i have it on my couch looking all cute and then you know when you finish something actually when i finished this corner to corner crochet blanket i immediately thought of starting a new crochet blanket with this in the same type of yarn to just use all my single ply marinas for something else and i was looking at this crochet it looks like i i need to look up what the english word is hold on let me just find the right word okay i looked it up it's called a shell stitch and uh it looks like this so it looks like small shells and i think this is very cute this is just my little <laughs> my little testing thing and uh, I thought about making, and I'm still thinking about that, making a striped uh, shell stitch blanket. Um, and then I was just kind of practicing a little bit. And then I thought, I remembered that I still have this that I'm working on for my brother and his girlfriend. And I have not been working on this since I was in Fainu. That was in September. So let me show you the progress on this. Ta -ta. So I have four rows now, almost four rows, because uh, this is the second last square on row number four. And the rule is uh, no green or blue. <laughs> um, it's looking really good. I'm really when I lay it out, I think the colors look really, really good together. Um, I really enjoy working on this, so I'm hoping I can finish this by Christmas. If I just uh, count how many squares I need to make more and then just kind of see if I can divide that out a little bit and see how many squares I need to do per week, that should be doable. Um, but I have actually had this uh, on my needles for a very, very long time. And when I picked it up the other day, I had, of course, removed the needle from the project. So I couldn't remember uh, what needle I'm using. I am uh, using a 4.5 millimeter needle. And it's the Cozy Memories blanket. Uh, except that I have another stitch count. I think. No, I know. Because I'm, I just counted. I have um, 46 stitches to begin with. And then... Uh, I put a stitch marker in the middle and I knit two together on both sides. So it's easy peasy. Uh, and I'm using fingering weight hilt with one strand of mohair. That was my first rule. And then I went through my stash again yesterday and I found some more yarn that was actually just DK weight yarns left over. None of this is hand dyed. Uh, I'm not using any of my own hand dyed yarn for this. I'm just trying to go through. <laughs> Uh, I have a huge stash of yarn. So I'm just going through all that uh, not hand dyed yarn that I have in my stash and then I'm putting all the hand dyed uh, scraps in my own baskets for some other projects. So uh, this is fun. This, uh, this pink one here is one of the first yarns I ever bought because I wanted to do like a huge sweater with um, cables. I never got around to that and I ripped the whole thing. But that's fine now. It's... Um, it's going to be in the blanket and here I have a basket full of all the scraps and I pick somewhat random <laughs> and uh, I have this uh, in the couch so when I sit down I just do a square uh, or two on the blanket and then I can knit on whatever else I want. So I have a bit of a mess here. Okay what else am I working on? I am working on my zebra shawl, which is not going to be named the zebra shawl, but in lack of a better name, I am knitting in my zebra yarn, which is a Highland wool yarn, 100% Highland wool yarn, fingering, fingering weight, fingering weights. Um, two ply. And um, I love this yarn. And my friends yesterday were laughing at me a little bit as well because they they keep thinking I'm such an 80s girl. And uh, that might be true. But anyway, I am so enjoying this knit. 
and I think this is so fun and if you don't want the bright colors you just pick none bright colors I'm alternating between slip stitches and just regular uh, garter stitch and another section of the slip stitches and garter stitch and I am so happy about how this turns out and I am considering tassels you all I'm just thinking to put tassels all the way down here and I'm thinking about doing tassel with all the three colors uh, together like on this sorry Stephen West I'm copycatting your tassels um, if you want to test knit this for me um, you can <laughs> and um, I'm only, uh, you, you need to be test knitting in zebra yarn. It doesn't have to be my zebra yarn, but it has to be zebra yarn. So if you're interested in testing this for me in my yarn, send me an email. If you're interested in testing this in somebody else's yarn, uh, you just have to hold on and wait until I announce on Instagram that I'm looking for testers um, for this. Uh, the pattern is almost done. I just haven't completed the knit quite yet. But you can start and uh, knit while I'm knitting. That's that's that should be that should work out fine. But I'm I'm just really enjoying this. I'm I'm thinking about another version with some brown, um, and maybe some peach. Okay, very. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I really need to renew myself. Maybe I should do a blue version with some of my new blue colors. Uh, actually, that could be that could be really nice. Like have three different kinds of blues. Huh. Yeah, I'll think about that for a little bit. But I really enjoy this. You can tell if you're not into like a rustic highland wool like this, you can just uh, substitute the zebra yarn with a merino zebra yarn. Um, if you can find it. <laughs> I am considering adding that to my yarn bases because it's I, it's possible to get the zebra yarn in the same base as my merino sock base. Uh, my merino sock base is a two ply yarn high twisted uh, merino nylon blend that I love to knit socks in. It is my favorite, no it's not actually my favorite sock yarn because I think my BFL base is my favorite sock yarn. It's also uh, a stronger yarn for socks. So if you like to knit socks, I really truly recommend the BFL. I will show you some BFL later because I dyed some blue on my BFL. So this was work in progress number two and I have this in my hand dyed bag uh, that I dyed in the colorway cinnamon spice which was one of my first colors. I don't know if I actually have any of these left they sold out pretty quickly um, but yeah if you're curious about the hand dyed bags go check out uh, what is left in the shop I will put a link down below uh, let me just grab something to drink the next little project I have in this little bunny bag that I got from Sandy by the lakeside and This is bird of the month of April. This is the yellow hammer. Maybe I should show you the the yarn before I show you my progress. This is the bird. Uh, this is the DK base. This is the Cavendish sock base. This is the strong sock base, and this is the only three bases that I have left. And I only have one of the Cavendish sock left. That's the last one. I have a few of the DK weights three DK weights and actually I only have one of these left as well so if you didn't get one and you want one you should really uh, go grab one now because they sell out I think that this is my favorite bird so far and I had a friend the other day say you say that about all the birds <laughs> but I think that's a good thing I really love this one I will put a picture of the bird here so you can see uh, the resemblance in colors between the yarn and the bird. I'm so happy about this. I Luckily I have the recipe for all the birds so I'm thinking by the end of the year we will make a top three or a vote of some sort and we will um, 
maybe do some more. This is my progress on my yellow hammer. I like to experiment a little bit with the mini skeins and not only do a contrasting heel cuff and toe. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I just get tired of doing the same thing over and over. So this time I just did, um, I don't remember how many rounds, uh, like 40 rounds, I think. 40 rounds with each mini and then 40 rounds with um, the main skein before I put uh, these little light bulb stitch markers for the heel. And I think 40, 40, yeah, so I have 120 rounds before I put in the contrasting note, before I put in the heel. And that's including the ribbing. Uh, so I'm really um, using up a lot of yarn. <laughs> I wanna, I use uh, as much of the minis as possible. Um, these two are pretty close in color, but this has a little bit more of a red tone and this has a little bit more of a green tone. Um, I'm debating if I should do the opposite on sock number two so that I start out with the yellow and then I end with the minis. I haven't decided yet, but I really like this. I have uh, filmed a little, I have filmed uh, dyeing this uh, colorway. So um, next Friday I will release a little vlog on how to, yeah, just a little vlog on uh, my inspiration and then the dyeing process and the finished product. So if you are curious about that, you can see that next week. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing a plain vanilla, nothing fancy at all. I think with these birds, I'm just going to let the color be the focus and uh, the minis and how to play <clears throat> with the minis different ways. That will be my main uh, focus for the birds of the year. If you are receiving any birds of the year or if you are knitting, please share with the hashtag uh, bird. It'll be fun to watch and see what you're all doing with the yarn. Um, I think that's all for what is going on on my needles. Uh, so I want to share with you uh, a little bit about the some of the new colors that I have in the shop and also some new bases that might be just around the corner. I have recently decided to keep the silky lace as a base this is one of the new colors i'm in love with this colorway i call it buttercup it is it's the same color as when you um whip an egg with lots of sugar uh almost like an eggnog or melted butter or popcorn or it's just creamy yellow it's not really yellow but has this like creamy yellow color to it and it has a tiny bit of speckling um the combination of this um lace weight with a little silk and the color oh my god I can't even. So I was um, taking notes. I was going through all of your comments on um, ideas for colors for the silky lace. And I'm not done yet, but I um, personally wanted something like this. And someone said, do some spring colors. And I thought like, this is really a spring color, right? And then one said something about pistachio and one said, uh, something with pear, like a green pear. So I did like a combo of the two. Um, it I call this one golden delicious because it's just like a golden delicious apple. Uh, I did some green specks, but not a lot, just a little bit. Uh, so it's not like everywhere speckled. It's just every now and then you get a little bit of speckling. 
so golden delicious and buttercup and the third one that i made uh someone said uh, a few of you said apricot pink and yellow so i experimented a little bit with some of those colors and i made this I call this tulips because it looks like all the different tulips I have in my garden. So it has a bit of a, like a, not purple, but like a violet, a little bit purple, <laughs> a little bit pink, a little bit orange, a little bit apricot, a little bit of all those colors. So when you look at it, it is just, it has so many different colors. I'm crazy about it um that means that now i have four different colors in this silky lace base i have no blue <laughs> but i will be making some blue um i have also dyed one for myself to try this is my vanilla uh colorway and so far i have only had this color on my silk mohair uh and only on my silk mohair in the kits that i have made for my giselle show so i don't even have the vanilla silk mohair like on its own i really should but i wanted to have that silk mohair and mix it with this silky lace and i'm i'm we're gonna do a little test later <laughs> uh make a little swatch and do some math and i want to do a cardigan or something not or something i want to make a cardigan um but i also want to make a show and also want to make different things but I'm thinking a cardi in this combi would be really nice for spring and summer mostly summer because here it gets cold in the summer as well so this is vanilla if you like this I'll make more let me know uh, that was all for the silky lace base now let me show you some of the blues so I have two new colorways and it's not like they're going to be regular colorways. I'm just dyeing a lot of blues and then I'm just going to see which ones I like and if I want to mix some or yada yada. This is my BFL base. And this I call Admiral. So it's a... It's a blue blue. I think it's a very gorgeous rich blue. It has depth. And... Um... It has like a purple undertone. Um, I said in the last episode that I thought this had a purple undertone. I call this one purple navy. Um, but compared to this, it really is a, more like a navy navy. So I might uh, reconsider the names, but I'm I'm really I really like this one. It's so bright and uh, it's a cold blue. I think it's a cold blue. Wouldn't you agree? And then the other blue I made is this one I called, how would you pronounce that? Azure? Azure. And then if you say Azure, Azure blue. Azure blue. Um, and this, this particular dye uh, was very easy to work with and you can see how the color is very very um solid <laughs> and even and in this uh the blue is a little bit more variegated i like both uh personally i like the variegated kind a little bit better it just it looks more alive and vibrant and hand dyed um so these were the two new ones um and I had three, I don't remember if it was in the last episode or the episode before that, I had three other blues. Uh, I think it was the episode before last, <laughs> so maybe 63. Um, yeah, but these are the new blues. Which one do you like the best? Admiral or Azure? Let me know. Okay, one last new color is my... Routile quartz. Okay, it shows up very bright on screen. When I first started to dye yarn, I wanted to dye yarn uh, inspired by a ring my husband gave me. And of course, I'm not wearing that ring now. But that ring has like a huge stone 
uh, of Rutile Quartz. I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce that better, but it's like a yellow golden kind of stone. And that inspired me back in the days to do a Rutile. I have the original one right here, actually. So this was the original one. And of course I lost the recipe. <laughs> and um, then I had a customer order some for her store and I had to kind of remake a, re a recipe. And it looked really good and it was close. But then the other day I was going through my pictures and I found a video of me telling the recipe on the original Rutile Quartz or Rudel Quartz. <laughs> uh, perfect. Except that one of the colors that I used in this is not available anymore. So the new ones are without that. So I just dyed this for a customer. And I just dyed a few of these um, silk hairs for me. And then I will be dyeing more of the rural quartz uh, for the store. Because I'm, I'm thinking like I am in a yellow phase. Actually, these two are not that far from each other each other uh, it's just lighter it's not the same yellow either but it's just they're familiar I think all right guys that is all for the new colors what is left now is two new bases that I'm considering one base I'm not ready to talk about yet uh, but the other base I'm really curious about what you think about this I am looking for the perfect TK wet yarn for sweater knitting not shawl knitting because uh, the perfect DK weight yarn for shawl knitting is the yarn that I showed you last time, which is this baby alpaca cashmere silk base that is just so insanely soft and yummy to touch that I'm going to do shawls and hats and stuff like this in this base, not sweaters. So I was looking for the perfect, I was going to say sock base. Not sock base. I was looking for the perfect DK weight yarn for sweaters. I wanted it to be not a merino yarn, but I wanted it to be something rustic, but not too rustic. And I wanted it to be a woolly wool, but not too itchy, scratchy, woolly woolly. And I thought it was hard. I like the BFL. Um, but then in Cologne, I talked to a man, a man. I talked to a man, I talked to a man who had sheep. I talked to a man who was this, uh, owns a spinnery and he had this space. And I think this is the perfect space, base in space. I think this is the perfect base. This is, let me say it right, 70% organic wool. Uh, that means it's not a specific breed, but it's just organic. So it can be a little bit blue face laser and a little bit normal wool and maybe a little bit, but it's, um, it's, it's soft, but it's still a little bit rustic. No, anyway, 70% organic wool and 30% linen. And the linen kind of gives it that heathered look because the linen doesn't accept the dye really well, or maybe actually nothing at all. <laughs> um, so the wool is organic. Of course, the finished result is not organic because I'm using acid dyes and they are not organic. Um, so it's not that the finished product is 100% organic, but the wool is 100% organic. Um, I love how it takes the dye. Um, it is shiny. Uh, not shiny, but a little bit actually, because the linen does something to the to the dye, and I think um, it takes the colors really good because it's not a super wash yarn. Um, it takes the dye slower, and that just does something to the end result. I like both. I like dyeing on uh, super wash yarn because super wash yarn just kind of grabs the dye. The, the like immediately uh, especially if it's warm and acidy it'll just take the dye like <laughs> um but non super wash yarn will not do that it's more like hey yo what's up yeah we could be friends but i'm just gonna lay here for a while and soak 
<laughs> so it's just kind of a little bit more um, it takes the dye slower making another result and this I am very curious about I can see this in Fair Isle sweater knitting and because I also think rustic yarn can be a, just a little bit more masculine in a good way as a so yeah I like this yarn let me know your thoughts about this yarn I'm thinking to have this and maybe dye six different colors uh, for the fall let me know what you think are you interested in the DK organic wool linen blend I'm very curious to know if y'all say no <laughs> it doesn't make much sense I think I'll get some anyway at least just to try for me and the other one I can show you what it is but I'm not really ready to share yet I dyed this little mini uh, in the vanilla colorway as well I can reveal that it is a sock base and I can also reveal that I am thinking about making a replacement with my Camajo sock base and as I can also tell you why it's not that I think that there's anything wrong with the yarn in the Camajo knit sock base it's only because the circumference of the yarn is uh, too small so it makes it very hard for me to dye with the result that I am uh, happy with um, or at least it takes longer to dye a result that I'm happy with because I have to turn the yarn over uh, multiple times I do that anyway but I have to turn it over even more when it comes to that yarn so I'm thinking about replacing it with this and then there is something else in the yarn besides merino but I'm not ready to share that with you either yet what do you think? Are you ready for a change? <laughs> I'm so ready for that change. Uh, guys, I think that's it uh, for now. I'm just desperately looking around to see if I remembered everything. And I actually did um, make notes, but I forgot to look at my notes. Let me just look at my notes. Oh, one thing I forgot. This year's Easter egg. Uh, I made these seven uh, pastel, but douche. What is that? Like a douche? No. <laughs> uh, like a like a dusty pastel uh, colors. They all have a little bit of speckle. Uh, the same color speckles actually, so they're like cohesive. I am so happy about this Easter egg. I loved to make this Easter egg. Um, and I don't know what to do with my seven gorgeous minis because uh, I was just going to say I can do the new crochet blanket but I decided that the new crochet blanket is only going to be single merinos I need to come up with another plan I'm not going to knit socks I want to do something blanket like Maybe I should come up with my own pattern for scrappy socks. Or not scrappy socks, but for scrappy minis. Also for the advent calendar. The advent calendar! Ooh, I forgot to tell you about the advent calendar. I'm so excited. Okay, so pre-orders will open now. So once you see this, pre-opens will be ready. Um, the theme of this advent calendar has been in my mind for so long. I knew two things. I knew I wanted to be inspired by art, uh, like painting art, <laughs> like paintings. And I knew I wanted to pick out a female painter. First, I needed her to be Danish. Then I fell in love with a Swedish uh, painter. Then I went back to Denmark. And looking for uh, female painters and then I thought I wanted a female painter from this century um, but then I just realized that I had to go with my heart and I have picked the Danish painter called Anna Anka I will put a picture up here of what one of her paintings look like 
and I will link down below um, some places where you can see a little bit, get a little bit more information about Anna and also some of her paintings. The reason why I ended up picking uh, Anna Anka is because she is born and raised in Skein and Skein is where I have my summer house. And some of you might have been with me when I vlogged from the summer house. That means I can take you with me to the museum, um, to the Skein Museum where Anna's pictures are uh, displayed. And that's one thing. Another thing is I can take you to her house because that is a museum in Skein. That's another thing. So I can show you the museum, I can show you her house, and I can also show you that light that makes uh, the paintings from Skein so very, very special. So I thought it would just be so much more fun because it's local to me and there are places in Skein that I can show you and make this advent special, but also making Vlogmas even more special this year. So every little uh, mini will be inspired by one of Anna Anka's paintings and I can pre-film a little bit about the painting and a little bit about the dyeing process. That is at least my plan for now. So even though you are not Danish, I know most of you are, no, actually not most of you are, but a lot of you are Danish. So you know Anna Anka. Uh, if you do not know Anna Anka, I hope that this will not make you turn away from this advent because you don't know her and you're just more comfortable with the inspiration universe that you know. <laughs> There's so many um, universes out there made for advents that we all know and can relate to because, well, it's just a worldwide thing. Um, I think it's so much more fun because I am Danish to do something uh, that has like a, that's, that has its foundation in the Danish culture. So I thought Anna Anka was the perfect pick for this year's uh, inspiration and theme. And also, <laughs> uh, I just remember my mom always buying like posters of her paintings. So my childhood, um, in my childhood, I just, I saw these paintings everywhere at the house, not the original paintings, but like posters. So Anna Anka is also a part of the, um, part of my home and my mom and dad were always like very interested in art as some of you know my great grandfather was a painter and actually has some of his uh, paintings at some of the bigger museums here in Denmark so I have a thing for art <laughs> so I hope that you are uh, excited about this year's advent theme I know I am super excited I can't wait to get um, going in the dye studio and I will be uh, opening pre-orders now and I will be closing them um, like in a month or so. So I have to do that because I need to buy all the yarn and I need to buy all the dye and I need to buy all the stuff to package all these minis and all the expenses that I have. So I need to get the money in advance so I can purchase all these things. That is one thing. Another thing is I have to ship these advents in October. And since I have to do 60, 70 or 80 advent calendars, I need to start as soon as possible. So I can have this, <laughs> a dying process started because it takes a very, very long time. It's very fun, but it's not fun if I am in a rush and I, that is why we open the advent pre-orders so early. So go grab yourself an advent if you're interested in this year's theme. Also, as a bonus info, I can tell you that Anna Anka was like a, a very modern woman from her age. She was born in 1858 or around that time. And uh, for women in Denmark at that time, they, was, they were supposed to stay at home and watch the kids. But she was pursuing her career as a painter and her husband totally supported that. So she was a very modern woman uh, and also very... Um, her mind was set on being a professional painter. So she did that and she still had a husband and kids. So <laughs> she did very well. So she is really a role model for, uh, for women of the time, very modern. So that is all I have to say about Anna Anka and the advent calendar. And, and that was also actually all I have to say uh, today. I forgot that in the beginning, I said something about Instagram and I'm just struggling with Instagram these days. I have like 
uh, 8,500 followers and I get like 100 likes on my posts. So something is messing with the algorithm. And uh, for us, that's just so dependent on Instagram. We try all the time to figure out what the algorithm is. So if you haven't seen a post from me on Instagram for a while, I just really encourage you to go by my profile and link a picture if you want to make sure that you still get my um, posts on your wall. If you don't want my posts on my wall, you don't have to do anything. But if you haven't seen anything from me in a while, please just stop by my profile and give me a like on some pictures. That helps a lot. Um, just to make sure that I <laughs> stay in the people's feeds. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you liked what you see, remember to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That does help a lot. Uh, I will see you in a week for the bird of the month vlog. And in two weeks with another regular episode. Take care, guys. I'll see you. Welcome back to the Kevin Jeanette podcast. Today it is Thursday, April 13th. It is actually my brother's 50th birthday today. So that is why I have an extra dog. <laughs> I have uh, Rolf. <laughs> you can see his tail here. Uh, Rolf is uh, one year old and he's a very cute, uh, he's a very cute mix between, a, I don't know what that's called in English, a birder sin and like a uh, like a shepherd kind of dog and he's so cute and you can see Teddy is with me here in the background so they're kind of fighting a little bit about the bed um Teddy is <laughs> he's enjoying golf but he's um he's 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 an older dog now Teddy is nine so he would actually just prefer to have his mom for himself and not share his space with Rolf <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying uh, having my little dog nephew over and I'm sure that in a few seconds they will uh, calm down. Actually, I think I'll just uh, close the door and let the dog stay outside. <laughs>